Hello, I'm Walter Bosley, and I'm going to read a selection from my time travel guidebook. Chapter 2 Mystery surrounding the missing details in the life of Charles Howard Johnson compels us to determine if there might be any clues to divination of the future. In Johnson's work, Lady of Shalott, there is a cracked mirror. This crack runs diagonally from southwest to northeast, or vice versa, if you prefer. Mirrors have long factored into fantasy tales. To see across time or space or into other dimensions and to communicate with beings there. In some stories, mirrors are used as physical portals to those alternate dimensions and across time. In Tennyson's poem, The Lady of Shalott lives alone in a tower, seeing the outside world as a reflection in a mirror. Did Johnson depict this element of the story to drop a clue? Reflective surfaces are often used for divination. Was Johnson and possibly Lockwood using a mirror to look into the future? Might the crack in the mirror in the art represent some specific detail of a particular method of scrying? Or could it have been representative of an unexpected consequence? What if the crack in the mirror represents an error in their process, perhaps a miscalculation or even tragedy? Lockwood's pertinent Baron Trump book came out in 1893, the year prior to Johnson's wife's death. If the artist and the author had played with arcane magic, could Johnson have presumed his wife's death to be spiritual punishment, a cruel price paid for daring to gain advantage over the order of the universe? If said mirror was actually esoteric technology, what exactly might that have been? Does a mirror have anything to do with the often mentioned but unspecified looking glass technology which some people claim sees through time? The so-called Project Looking Glass, which was chattered about in the Q community and infotainment sources like Edge of Wonder, is allegedly derived from captured ET technology. Unfortunately, the origin of this story is Bob Lazar, who has zero credibility around here. Thus can we eliminate this looking glass technology from consideration. Likewise, claims made by the blatantly dubious whistleblower SSP time-jumping commando ranks. There is a story I heard from my mentor about a pair of non-optical spectacles which were supposedly found among ancient relics discovered deep within Carlsbad Caverns, said spectacles allegedly containing thin wires in the lenses upon which were recorded observations made in the past. Admittedly, this is only a story, albeit told by an intelligence community source who proved trustworthy in other instances. One might also consider the chronovisor of exorcist priest Father Pellegrino Ernetti. It was a spherical chamber resembling an oceanic bathosphere. Ernetti claimed that he traveled back in time to view events in the life of Jesus Christ, but the photo the priest said he took of the living Christ clearly shows a devotional statue crafted in the modern era. Ernetti later confessed that it was all a lie, lifted from a 1950s camera of past events, claimed by the fraud Baird T. Spaulding, who also alleged to have viewed Jesus Christ, his experience being the Sermon on the Mount. Scratch the chronovisor off the list and put the aforementioned spectacles in the gray file. Rumors of devices that see across time have been with us consistently since devices have become a common reality in everyday life. Spectacles, cameras, chronovisors, and reverse-engineered time-traveling ET UFO technology have taken over from the crystal balls and scrying pools of more superstitious, less technological times. Does that mean there have never been any real attempts at looking through time? It is claimed that scientific remote viewing enables an individual to see across time. Using protocols developed for a classified U.S. military project, one is alleged to be able to tap into the ether, so to speak, and see a particular viewing target in the distant past. 
one would assume that seeing a given target in the future could only be possible if that future has actually happened. Unless, of course, the viewer is seeing possibilities along alternate timelines. You get the idea. If not, consider what I proposed in my book, The Esoteric Napoleon, in response to the legend that Napoleon Bonaparte had intensely strange experience inside the Great Pyramid, I say he did have that experience because of what the King's Chamber actually may be, the mange point of the greater structure, i.e. the intersection of all planes in a pyramidal design. Further, I argue that this particular mange point interface with multiple dimensions, is activated by the presence of the human consciousness, specifically when a person lies down inside the so-called sarcophagus in the room. My hypothesis is that Napoleon saw across time and space, and it freaked him out. But Napoleon did not travel across time and space. I like to think that what he saw informed his decisions for the remainder of his life, just as Lockwood and Johnson scrying would have provided them with somewhat murky visions, Napoleon would have been working with his best understanding of what he saw in the pyramid. You'll have to decide for yourself whether or not you accept remote viewing as valid. I personally find it legitimate. I was trained in RV protocols in 2007, though I had likely been seeing remotely my entire life. I think that all human beings are capable of doing so. My experiences with RV have convinced me that it's real, but again, it's not actual travel across time and space in the literal sense. However, there is an element in remote viewing which I think is present in the method of time travel I'll be recommending to you. That element is linked to what I will refer to as the grappling hook in a later chapter. The same clearing of the mind and focus on the target one applies in remote viewing is what the proposed time traveler will use in casting his or her line to the targeted time-space coordinate. In effect, your mind will reach the selected destination before your body. It must. But I don't want to get ahead, so we'll leave that there and return to a little more background context. The aforementioned Jack Finney and soon-to-be-discussed Richard Matheson provide us with best examples of what I think Charles Howard Johnson most likely did if he traveled or saw through time. In their respective works of fiction, Time and Again and Bid Time Return, known as Somewhere in Time, these two authors offer nearly identical methods of time travel. This shouldn't be such a surprise when you consider that these works were released within five years of each other. What makes them significant, in my opinion, is their juxtaposition with the establishment of the U.S. military remote viewing program. Finney's Time and Again was released in 1970 and features a secret military program in which operatives immerse themselves in the trappings of their targeted time. Matheson's Bid Time Return, henceforth known as Somewhere in Time, was released in 1975. The available public record has the U.S. military remote viewing program, Project Stargate, starting in 1972. However, the impetus for the program is dated to 1970. Did Jack Finney know something about it before writing his novel, suggesting an origin in the late 1960s? Or did the military intelligence community get the idea from Jack Finney? This begs the question, was Charles Howard Johnson an operative in a U.S. military time-viewing program? I've just read a selection from the Time Travel Guidebook by Walter Bosley, available at walterbosley.com. 